In today's lesson, I'm going to introduce the concept of cross-price elasticity of demand. This is one of the four types of elasticity that we study in economics along with PED, PES, and income elasticity of demand. There are videos on these that you can find on my YouTube channel. Let's start with the definition of cross-price elasticity of demand. This is quite similar to price elasticity of demand, which measures the responsiveness of consumers of a particular good to a change in price of that good. However, with cross-price elasticity of demand, what we look at is the responsiveness of consumers of a particular good to a change in the price of a related good. Now, earlier in the course, you learned that goods can be related in two ways in economics. From a consumer's perspective, goods can either be substitutes for each other or complements for each other. So what XED measures, therefore, is the responsiveness of consumers of one good to a change in the price of that good substitute or a change in the price of a good that is complementary to the good in question. The formula for XED, cross elasticity of demand, is going to look very familiar to those who have already studied the other types of elasticity. It's simply the percentage change in the quantity of one good in this case, I'll call it good A, divided by the percentage change in the price of good B. Now the assumption here is that goods A and B are either substitutes for each other or complementary goods. Let's do an example here. Notice that in the graphs on my right I have the weekly demand for new cars in Switzerland and the weekly demand for public transport rides in Switzerland. At present, at the current price of cars, 1,000 new cars are being demanded each week and 1 million public transport rides are being demanded each week. Clearly, these goods are substitutes for each other, but what I wish to look at now is not the effect that a change in the price of cars would have on demand for public transportation. Rather, what would happen if the price of oil were to increase by 20%? The question we need to now answer is what is the relationship between the price of oil and the demand for cars and the demand for public transportation? For which of the two goods in the graphs on the right is oil a complementary good and for which is it a substitute good? Of course anybody who wishes to drive a car must fill that car with gasoline or petrol. The fuel for cars is manufactured using oil. Therefore an increase in oil prices will make it more costly to drive a car. How will the increase in the price of oil therefore affect the demand for new cars? Obviously, fewer people will wish to buy cars at every price if the fuel for those cars becomes more expensive. In other words, the demand for cars will decrease when the price of oil rises. I'll call the new demand curve D1. What impact will the reduced demand for cars have on the quantity of cars demanded at every price in Switzerland? Let's show the decrease in the quantity of cars demanded weekly in Switzerland resulting from the higher oil prices. Let's assume that the new quantity of cars demanded in Switzerland is 700 per week. We can now calculate the cross price elasticity of demand between oil and a complementary good for oil, cars, which depend on oil in order to drive. Let's do the calculation now. So we'll look at the XED for cars and oil. What we must do is first calculate the percentage change in the quantity of cars. We must take the new quantity, that's 700, subtract the original quantity of 100, and divide the difference by the original quantity of 100. As we can see, there will be a negative 30% change in the quantity of new cars being driven. Now we can divide this by the percent change in price, which was a 20% increase in the price of oil. So we've got the percent change in the quantity of good A, that's cars on the top, and the percent change in the price of good B, that's oil on the bottom. And this gives us an XED coefficient of negative 1.5. The negative sign is very important here. It tells us that the relationship between the price of oil and demand for cars is an inverse relationship since these goods are complementary to each other. So looking down at our interpretation of the XED value, we can see that whenever two goods are complementary to each other, the XED coefficient will always be negative. Anytime the price of one good goes up and the demand for the other good goes down, by definition, those two goods are complementary, and therefore the XED coefficient will always be negative, as it is for cars and oil in this example. What does the value of 1.5 tell you, though? 
As we learned in previous lessons, in order to interpret the absolute value of an elasticity coefficient, we know that if it is between 0 and 1, demand is inelastic. If it is greater than 1, demand is elastic. Clearly, demand for cars is cross-price elastic with oil. In other words, a particular change in the price of oil will lead to a larger percentage change in the demand for cars. Now let's look at our next example, public transportation. How are oil and public transportation related to each other? Well, clearly, you don't need to buy oil in order to take public transportation, since you don't have to buy fuel for a bus or a train. Therefore, as the price of oil goes up, we'd expect the demand for public transportation to rise, since people will opt to take public transport rather than driving their own automobiles for which they have to buy fuel. The increase in the price of oil should cause the demand for public transportation to increase as I'm showing here to D1. Assume that following a 20% increase in the price of oil, the number of rides on public transportation each week in Switzerland increases from 1 million to 1.1 million. Now we have the information we need to calculate the cross elasticity of demand between public transportation and oil. First, let's calculate the percent change in the quantity of public transportation rides. We can take the new quantity of 1.1, subtract the original quantity of 1, and divide by the original quantity of 1. This gives us a 10% increase in the number of public transportation rides as a result of a 20% increase in the price of oil, giving us an XED coefficient of 0.5. How can we interpret this 0.5 XED coefficient? Well, indirectly, oil and public transportation are substitutes for each other. Since people will opt to take more public transportation when oil prices rise, that by definition makes them substitutes. Therefore, the XED coefficient will always be positive. Why is XED always positive for two substitutes? Clearly because there is a direct relationship between the price of one good and the demand for its substitute. As oil prices rise, people will choose to drive their cars less and take more public transportation. Therefore, the XED coefficient reflects this direct relationship and is always positive. In order to further interpret the XED value, we must remind ourselves that any time the elasticity coefficient is less than 1, demand is considered inelastic. Any time it is greater than 1, demand is considered elastic. The same holds true for cross-price elasticity of demand. An XED value of less than 1 means consumers of one good are relatively unresponsive to changes in the price of the related good. However, if the XED value is greater than 1, it means that consumers of one good are relatively responsive to changes in the price of the related good. That's the same interpretation we had for PED and PES and we will have for YED as well, income elasticity of demand. So that brings us to the final part of our lesson today. What are the determinants of cross price elasticity of demand? Why might XED for two goods be higher or lower than they are for two other goods? This is simply related to the substitutability and the amount by which one good depends on the other good. The more easily substitutable two goods are for one another, the higher the XED coefficient will be. Why is this the case? Think of a simple example. I often use Coke and Pepsi as examples of two substitute goods. These are clearly very substitutable. The flavor is almost indistinguishable unless you happen to be a connoisseur of soft drinks. Therefore, an increase in the price of Coke should lead to a correspondingly larger increase in the demand for Pepsi as consumers will just simply substitute more Pepsi for the now higher priced Coke. But what's an example of a good that is less substitutable than Pepsi is for Coke? I often use energy drinks. Most of my students say that Coke and energy drinks are not good substitutes for one another. Therefore, we would not expect the demand for energy drinks to rise by as much as the demand for Pepsi would rise following a particular increase in the price of Coke. Most people who drink energy drinks don't often substitute soft drinks for their energy drinks. Therefore, the XED coefficient for two goods like Coke and Red Bull would be expected to be lower than two goods like Coke and Pepsi. So the more easily substitutable two goods are for one another, the higher the XED coefficient should be. Now, speaking of complementary goods, how strongly consumers of one good depend on the related good will determine how high the XED coefficient will be for two complementary goods. For example, you could say that hamburgers and french fries are usually consumed together. 
Therefore, an increase in the price of hamburgers should lead to a decrease in the demand for French fries. However, are there any goods that hamburgers are more commonly consumed with? Well, sure, hamburger buns. Very few people would ever eat a hamburger without a bun. Therefore, you could say that the XCD coefficient for hamburgers and hamburger buns would likely be much larger than the XCD coefficient for hamburger and french fries. This is because people will simply not buy hamburger buns when the price of hamburgers goes up by very much. However, people might still buy french fries even if hamburger prices have risen, since french fries can be eaten on their own or with other dishes such as hot dogs or anything else like fish and chips. To summarize, the more dependent one good is on its complement, the higher the XCD coefficient should be between those two goods. And the more substitutable two goods are for one another, the higher the XCD coefficient should be for two substitutes. To recap, we've shown that XCD is calculated using basically the same formula as the other types of elasticity. The only difference between this and PED is that we're looking at two related goods, not one particular good. The example we used was oil and how an increase in the price of oil could cause demand for cars to decrease and demand for public transportation to increase. The percentage by which demand for public transportation in cars will change following a particular change in the price of oil determines the XED for cars and oil and the XED for public transport and oil. Unlike PED, which will always be negative due to the inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded, XED can be either negative in the case of complementary goods or positive in the case of substitute goods. And how high the absolute value of the XED coefficient will be depends on how closely substitutable or how dependent two goods are on one another.